throw them on the ground. Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. We haven't even started and I've already screwed things up. Today, I wanna to be talking with you about resin 3D printing and a way that you can make it so that your prints aren't nearly as fragile as they typically are. And if you're not familiar with resin 3D prints, they might produce some amazing details. However, one big downside is if you drop any of your resin 3D prints, more than likely, they're gonna shatter. And as a quick example of what I'm talking about, here is a previous print that I've run off and printed that I've shown off in previous videos here. Uh, it's got a nice little staff. It's a miniature file here and broken and broken. While the prints look amazing, they're super, super brittle. And that's a typical issue with resin 3D prints. And there's a product on the market that you can mix in with your resin 3D prints that's gonna help alleviate that issue. Here I've run off and 3D printed a handful of miniatures from Loot Studios and Arch Villain Games on the Elgu Mars 3. This is easily one of my favorite resin 3D printers that I'm working with these days. It prints stupidly fast. It has a 4K screen and it just provides some amazing results on that slightly larger build plate than you have on the Mars 2. Now, I printed these with some of the Elgu standard ABS-like resin. This was actually just leftover resin from my previous zombie Captain America print that I did last week. So I printed off these miniatures with some of that leftover resin. And once I go through the process of curing these, we're gonna run into the exact same issue that I was just showing you, that the prints are gonna be super brittle and I don't wanna break these just yet. So what we're gonna be doing is taking a brand new bottle of Elgu's ABS light gray resin and mixing it in with some of this Soriatech Tenacious resin. This is a really flexible resin that you can actually mix in with a lot of your other resins that you're working with. And I've seen a ton of people posting about this over on different Facebook groups, and I need to try it out. So I went off and ordered some for myself. It is a good bit more expensive, so that's why I'm all about using as little as possible and maximizing the amount that we can get out of this one bottle, which by the way is $65 over on Amazon. And the consensus across the Facebook groups of the users that have tried this out is that you're gonna go with a nine to one ratio, nine parts of your standard resin with one part of the Soritech Tenacious. So to further complicate things, which by the way, you really don't need to do, you just pour yours directly in there, just guesstimate how much you're gonna need. But I wanted to go very scientific with it. So I'm gonna be weighing out how much a full bottle weighs, then weighing out how much an empty bottle weighs to get the difference of how much liquid we have in there, then remove a certain amount of liquid and then add in the Tenacious to get that perfect mixture there of a nine to one ratio. Ratio. And then I'm gonna run those exact same 3D prints with the exact same settings. Before we take a look at the 3D prints, I wanna say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is none other than Elgu, the makers of the Mars 3, and the Mercury X Wash and Cure bundle that I use to clean off these 3D prints. They're launching a Kickstarter campaign for their newest resin 3D printer tomorrow, Saturday, September 11th at 10 a.m. Eastern. You'll wanna make sure to tune in and find out more information about that once it goes live, because they are gonna be running some crazy initial deals on that machine, and they're gonna be live streaming over on their TikTok account, giving away a few different 3D printers. So you wanna make sure to tune in for that. I'll also be posting my own video on Saturday after they launch their Kickstarter campaign with my initial feedback there based on the information that they've provided as part of that campaign. I'll have links down below to Elgu's site as well as their Kickstarter campaign and more information on the products that I featured in today's video. Thanks again to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. All right, so let's take a look at some of these prints here. So here is the standard ABS-like resin and then here's the one that's mixed with the Tenacious. Cape, really stiff, can't move it. Here, this has a little bit of a flex to it, a little bit more of a flex to it. Now adding 10% of that Tenacious just means it's gonna have a little bit more give than your typical resin. So here is the little saber holder here. I can't remember what that's called. Um, but here, it can I can bend it slightly, but I can probably, oh, look at that. It's actually bending. Oh, there we go. And it popped right off. So that's, that's kind of what I want to test here. So here with the gray one, it is much more flexible and malleable. Oh, there we go. It took a little bit more for that to break. Now let's take a look at the sword. So the sword, again, Nice and flexible here on both of these, whoops. <laughs> and this one, again, nice and flexible. This is, uh, I would say, a good bit more flexible than 
this blue one. This is much more stiff than the gray version that has Tenacious mixed into it. So here's another example of a miniature where you can see I've already snapped off the hand when I was removing the prints. So again, this doesn't mean that you're immune to your minis breaking or your prints breaking. It's just gonna add a little bit more durability and flexibility to those prints. So here with that staff, that really easily snapped in half there and pretty much the same. That's, it's gonna be the uh, that weak point there in the hand. This is kind of a bust so far. I was able to snap her in half really easily Oh man, <laughs> I can't, <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. Uh, that took a lot more effort to snap her in half than the standard resin version. The last one I'm gonna mutilate here is this guy, which is an awesome model, by the way. Uh, but yeah, you can see the sword, very flexible still, even though this is cured. On the back, it's gonna be the same situation where if I put a little bit of pressure here on the back, it's gonna pop right off and go flying here. This sword is so much more flexible than this other one. This is much more stiff than this. This is, uh, it, it's just really a lot more flexible. So here I can much more easily bend this. Oh my gosh, look at that. I can really bend this one and it's gonna be a much more difficult, there we go, it finally broke off. All right, I'm outside, it's probably a little windy and the audio is not great, but here, this is just a, a little nice controlled stand. Let's uh, knock these guys off and see what happens. Nothing. All right, let's do the same thing with this gentleman right here. Nothing. All right, we're gonna get a little bit more aggressive with this here. I'm just gonna take these both in hand and throw them on the ground. All right, well, this guy snapped at the legs there. His, I thought his feet were gonna pop off the base, but his legs snapped. And this one appears to be perfectly fine other than probably, yeah, thoroughly scratched up on the head there. Just for fun, let's try that again. Okay. Still good. Still good. There we go. Took a few tries for it to break. Now the last one I will show you is a bust that I printed from Loot Studios and I'm not gonna break this. But I wanted to show you, uh, this is again printed in the Tenacious Mix with the Elgu ABS like resin. And I just wanted to show you the axe handle here and how this has a lot of give and a lot of flex with it. These have already been washed and cured in the UV station. And again, just a lot more durable. It doesn't mean that you're perfectly immune from your 3D prints breaking, but it is adding a lot more durability and flexibility to your resin 3D prints. I'm really happy with the results that I'm seeing by mixing in this small amount of Tenacious in with my standard resin and running off in 3D printing with it. I didn't have to change any of my resin 3D printing settings. Everything worked just fine and it provided a little bit more durability. Again, not perfect and it's not certainly foolproof or break proof, but it is providing me with that little bit extra of a give when it comes to my 3D prints. And the main reason why I was so interested in this is because I'm really gearing up and selling more things online when it comes to resin 3D prints, and I've had some issues with things breaking in transit, and so this should really help reduce some of those issues that I'm running into. Now, if you really wanted to, you could run off and do 50%, 75%, 100%. However, I think me personally, that's a little bit overkill, and just providing that small amount will make this one bottle last a whole lot longer and it's still providing you with that additional flexibility for your 3D prints. If you're interested in trying out any of the Sarai Tech Tenacious, I'll have links down below where you can find that over on Amazon. I'll also have links to all the Elgu products featured in today's video. I did also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in my resin 3D printing settings, uh, support settings, you'll find that over on in my Patreon and a link down below. Hey, thanks so much for watching, you guys, and make sure to tune in tomorrow where I'll be discussing some of the updates that are coming with this new Elgu Kickstarter 3D printer. Hey, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.